Yo guys, what up? So I'm gonna walk you through how I was able to get this render to look like a photo. All right, first thing first, here is the actual full scene. Now, most of this scene was built from a photo. Like this was the main asset that I built from a photo. And I'll show you guys the original photo of this building. This is the original photo that I built. I walk past this place every morning on my morning walk here in Japan. So literally what I did was with this photo, I took it into Photoshop, did a little bit of cleanup here. You can see on here, there were some wires that crossed in front of this sign. I just basically clone, clone painted those out. And then I actually took the perspective of it and sh straightened the whole thing out. That process is very easy. If you go into Photoshop, there's this tool that allows you, it's called a perspective warp tool. And that allows me just to line up my lines here onto the image so you're looking for horizontal points and you're looking for vertical points to line your image up off of and once you get those all lined up you're going to hit this button called warp and it's going to straighten out the image so once i had that i basically just went back into blender i started off with just the plane now for all my blender octane users what i typically do when i'm working on this technique is i switch it from octane and go back to cycles right i work in cycles because octane doesn't allow us to bring images as planes in so go to cycles bringing in an image as planes and then from there pretty much a lot of us know this technique now but if you don't you're literally just going to take your image and you're going to start adding loop cuts and cutting into it once you have everything cut out extruded and you basically have your base model set up here then you're going to want to jump back into your uv editor now for my octane peeps where again you will have you'll be in cycles and it's really easy when you go from cycles you're going to just take your original material and just literally click on this switch over to octane and you're going to have the option which is not showing here because i've already converted it it's going to be a little says conversion and then boom you'll be able to be back into your standard octane work flow now even if you're using cycles it doesn't really matter you guys know the routine there from you all we have to do now is jump into our uv editor and then we start lining up our uvs to match the model and really just fine tuning things i will click on these like for example this sign here and then you can see here here is the uv for that and then all i literally do is just line these lines up to match the, the image that you want to do it's super easy and you can get even more detail i would like literally line this line up on the seam so the seams will also line up that's which i've actually did i've made another version right there you can see the little cutout i've lined the seams up with the seam of my actual model just to really integrate things a little bit more now for my octane guys if you're working in cycles you can use the material preview which is fine but in octane we do not have have the material preview you can see here there's a mat material preview right there or the viewport shading if I go into octane that disappears but in my form you can see I can still see the textures there is a add-on called octane tools that allows me to convert any material and it makes a small little note if I jump into my shader material really quickly on my octane material you can see here here's my universal and here is my rgb image which is basically this the photo i click on that i press i and this little node this little image pops up here this is basically a cycles image color image and this allows me to jump back over to my viewport then i can go from object mode and if i click on texture boom the texture will show up so i'll have that link down below if you're inside of our blender octane community if you go to the classroom it'll also will be down there you can just download it straight from the classroom but for those of you who are not inside my blender octane community i will put the link down in the description for you guys the more detail you cut out the better it's going to be now pro tip what i did that really helped me because my scene was starting getting a little bit heavy what i wanted to do was if i go back to my photo there were certain things that i really wanted for example these trash cans like i really like these trash cans plus i wanted to make them separate so i can use them in other assets i'm going to be building later plus i can build up my asset library so for example all i did was take this photo brought it into a new file and i literally just cut out the trash can and then if you look here this is what i basically got this is another element or asset i can add to my asset library that i can use for other renders and that's just it i literally cut it out from the photo it did the same process extrude out and did all that stuff and then boom there is my garbage can and i literally filled it with trash right super easy now i have a separate asset to build off of now i also did that same process on the gotcha gotcha machines here i literally just brought them into a new file built them up matter of fact this was a separate photo this was a separate day that i took this photo because after i built this i was 
was like, man, I need more elements. Oh, gotcha, gotcha machines. They're everywhere in Japan, right? So snapped off another photo, cut those out. As a matter of fact, I can show you those came out really nice. And I, I did the technique that I did on those was a little bit different. As I'm doing this, now I'm starting to learn different text and things. For example, here on this gotcha machine, I made the glass or this plastic material separate. It has no image in it. It's just a clear glass. And then I took the original photo and literally cut that part out and sunk it behind the glass. So it looks like it's actually inside the glass, which just gives it a little bit more depth. I will put this down in the description. If you guys want to download this asset, it will be down there free to download. Again, the geometry on it is really crude and, and gross, but you know, the asset really works. If you're kind of having it not too close up on it, a close up shot on it, it really works out really cool. If you really want to know the difference between octane and cycles, I do have this video here. You guys can take a look at that. And for those of you guys who really want to get more in depth with Blender Octane, I do have a community links down below. We got all kinds of free assets in there, free files, all kinds of, we have a material asset library that we're building and you can really be involved with other people who are into Blender Octane as well. Catch you guys in the next render. Patrick LeVar, peace.